Hey, what's up, users, and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, this is John at muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, we're going to create a virtual art gallery in Adobe Muse with the responsive lightbox gallery widget found at museforyoushop.com. Um, so I have gotten the question quite a bit, you know, how do I link uh, an image in the lightbox to, let's say, a PayPal checkout or a PayPal shopping cart? Or, you know, if I have a painting, how do I allow someone to purchase the painting right from the lightbox gallery. Uh, so this video is here to answer that question. Um, it's actually very simple. I'd say the the longest part would be compressing the images and making sure they're not they're not too large for the website. So I'll go ahead and preview this in the browser. So I'll go to file preview page and browser. And here I'll just click on the thumbnail to go through the lightbox gallery and I'll make it full screen so I can go through and see all the images nice and clearly. So I'm going through, just kind of checking out the art gallery, just like this. And I'll go through, and let's say I want to purchase this one here. So right here in the caption, it says click here to buy. Uh, the price is 2,500 plus shipping. And then the, the description is beautiful painting. Um, yeah, that's what I wrote for the description there. So here you can click on the caption and it'll take you directly to PayPal. So here we have the description. I didn't get too creative with, with the description, uh, but it's painting three. We have the price 2,500, the quantity is one and the total. And then here we have the item total and the shipping cost, which is 45. So the total comes out to 2,545. And here I can check out with my PayPal account, my debit card or credit card, or if I'm a guest, I can check out here. Uh, but I wanna continue shopping. There was another painting in there that I liked. So I'll click on continue shopping. And here I'll click on the first image again. Um, I'll just go through really nice images. I got these images from Adobe stock. Um, so here I want to purchase this first one here. So here I'll click on click here to buy and it'll take me to PayPal. And then here we have painting one and painting three, uh, the price quantity and total. And it adds it up here in the item total, which is 4,500 for both, for both paintings. Uh, the shipping is $90 because it's $45 for each painting. Um, and again, I can check out with PayPal or if I'm a guest, I can click on checkout and it'll bring me to uh, the guest checkout here. I just, I just fill out this information and I can purchase those two paintings. Uh, so just like that, you can link the Lightbox gallery to you know anything, even if it, the images of a product, you can link it uh, within the Lightbox um, and just have, in this case, we're gonna do a virtual art gallery and use the example of paintings. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so I'll go into Adobe Muse, um, I'll create a new site, I'll go to File, New Site, and I'll click OK, and I'll double click on the home page. Here I have a blank site, and I'm just going to copy this text here, so I'm going to hit Command C to copy, and then go into the home page, and then hit, or I'm going to right click and say Paste and Create Breakpoints, so I have those breakpoints in there, and I can kind of style the site on the different breakpoints. Um, I didn't get too specific with the breakpoints. I just put you know four here so I could kind of work with these here. Um, so there I have the text. Um, and before we even bring in the widget, I want to compress and resize the images for the, the lightbox gallery. And actually, I'll bring it in now just to show kind of an example. So here I'll go into my library panel. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library. And here I'll type in RLG. And I'll bring in the RLG at first and I'll place it at the top, just like that. And I can leave this blank here because I'm working with a responsive or fluid width website in Adobe Muse, so I'll leave this blank. This is only if I'm working in adaptive design. And then I'll bring in the RLG images. So I'll click, hold, and drag, and place right in there. Okay, and then I'll stretch the browser width. So here in the text option, or excuse me, in the resize option, so right here, I'll click the drop down and I'll say stretch to browser width and it stretches uh, the thumbnails or the lightbox images to the browser width. And then I want to center these thumbnails in the center of the website. So to do that, I'll go to text uh, right up here and I'll select align center and it'll align the thumbnails in the center. So there I have the thumbnails for the lightbox gallery right in there. And then if I open the widget options for the lightbox gallery uh, right here with the blue circle, we have the thumbnail images, so we want to add thumbnail images for the um, 
for the website, this is what the user will initially see. And then we have images one through 12. So what I wanna do now is compress the images and get my thumbnail images ready for the Lightbox gallery. So to do that, I'm gonna open my finder and I'm gonna go here into this images folder and here I have the originals. So let's say you have an artist and they want a virtual art gallery on their site with where the user can pay for the paintings. Um, they'll probably give you, you know, some really large files. So if I open this, I have these Adobe stock files. And if we look at the size, they're really large, 7.4, 8.6, 5.2, 1.7, and so on. We have 5.8 down here as well. Um, so these are really large. And sometimes if someone's sending you an image of a painting, it could be for print. So it might even be a larger size than that. So what I wanna do is compress these images uh, th so they're not too large on the website. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy these images. So I'm gonna hit Command-C to copy. I'm gonna go back into this folder. I'm going to right click, and I'm gonna create a new folder called Website Images. And I'm gonna double click and paste. Um, I wanna leave the originals there just in case I need the originals again for some reason. So I'm just gonna you know, create, uh, yeah, paste these new images in a new folder so I can compress these images here. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do, cause if I open, let's say I open this first one um, and I preview and I look at the size the size is 3,430 by 2,467. Uh, now, if you're on a 27 inch iMac, the highest resolution is uh, 2,560 by 1440. And actually when you put an image into Adobe Muse, um, it actually resizes to 2,040, 2,048 pixels in width, uh, unless, you say to, unless you ask it to import a larger image. So I'm gonna resize all of these images to 2048 pixels in width, and I find that to be a good size, uh, even for large screens. So I'm gonna select all of these. I'm going to right click, open with, uh, preview. I'm on my Mac here, and I'm gonna hold down Command A to select all. I'm gonna to go to Tools, Adjust Size, and I'm gonna enter in 2048. Um, and the resolution doesn't need to be 300. I can just set it to 72. Uh, 300 is more for print, and 72 is more for, for screens. Um, you can say 300, I don't think it'll really make a difference there. Um, but yeah, I'll do 72. And right away we can see that for those seven images, it was 32.7 and now it's 9.8 me megabytes. So it reduced it by a third, which is great. So I'll click okay. And just like that, it'll reduce all the images. And now I can hold down command S to save and it'll save all of the images. All right, so I'll close this now. And there we have the image sizes. It's already been reduced a bit, 3.2, 2.9, and so on. So now I wanna run it, run it through a compressor. So I'm gonna go to a website called compressjpeg.com. And then I'm just gonna click, hold, and drag, and drag these files. Here, let me scroll down so we don't see that ad there. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag all of these files in here, and it'll run through and compress all of the images and kind of reduce the file size for the images. Okay, so it compressed all the images. Um, as we can see, it reduced it by quite a bit. So we have 57%, 57%, 57, 52, 47, 47, and 54. Uh, so there's an average about 50%, you have about 50% for the reduction in size for each image, uh, which is quite a bit. So here I'll click on download all, and it'll download mm -hmm. the images, the zip file to my computer. So I'll go ahead and bring that zip file into here. Okay, so there's the zip file, so I'll double click. It's called Compressed JPEG. And in here I have my compressed images. So I'll just zoom in again. So here the file sizes are quite smaller, 1.4, 1.2, 1.1, 781, 670, 716, and 880. Now these are good sizes for the Lightbox Gallery because the Lightbox Gallery doesn't immediately load the images. Um, it loads it as you're going through the gallery. So um, these are good sizes here for for the gallery. Uh, so now we want to get into the thumbnail images. The thumbnail images are actually what will be loaded initially when the website loads. Um, so we can reduce those to really, really small and have our website lo load nice and quickly. Um, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go to another website um, called berm.net. And here I'm going to crop and resize uh, the images for the thumbnail images. So I'm gonna select the originals. I'm not gonna select the compressed images um, because it already reduces it to a really, uh, excuse me, a really small file size. 
because uh, I'm going to set it to 300 by 300. Um, so I don't really need to work with compressed images for the thumbnails. So here I'm going to select all of these, uh, the ones that I've, re that I've made 2048 pixels in width. And I'm going to click, hold, and drag and place right in here. And for the width, I'm going to say 300 and the height 300 as well. And for the quality, I'm gonna say 100. Since it's already a small image, I don't really wanna lose quality uh, for the image. So here I'll click on save.zip and it'll save it to my computer and I'll bring it in here. Okay, and there we have it, it's the berm.zip, so I'll double click. And here we have the thumbnail images. So we can see the file size is really small, 250, 184, 233, 190. 197, 199, and 200. So this is a nice size for the initial loading of my website. It'll load these images here. All right, so now that I've compressed and uh, cropped the images for the thumbnails, I can go ahead and add it to the Lightbox Gallery. So I'll minimize this, and I'll go into the Lightbox Gallery. I'll open the Widget Options. And for the number of images, I'm gonna say seven, because I have seven, Im seven images. And then I'll go ahead and add the thumbnail images. So here I'll click on add file and here I have the website images. Um, yeah, I have website images and originals. I'll click on website images. Um, so you just need to find that folder where you place these, uh, these images and I'll click on the berm because these are where the thumbnails are. Um, and I could actually rename this to thumbnails and I'll do that now. It'll make it a bit easier to kind of know which is which. So here I'll just say thumbnails like that. And here I'll say compressed images. Okay, so now I'll go back in here and I'll go into the thumbnail images. I'll say add file, go into thumbnails, and let's see uh, how the order I'm going to put this in. So I'll click on this one, then this one, this one, this one, this one, here, and this last one. Okay, so there I have my thumbnail images and we can see they're in the, in the gallery. So if I preview, we can click, uh, but there's no uh, gallery image here, so I'll have to add those uh, within the widget. So I'll go back. So now I'll add the images, so I'll click on image one, click on add file, and I wanna go back to the website images and click on compressed images. So these are the larger images that have been compressed, and I wanna add them in the same order that I added the thumbnails. So I'll go through and add these images. Okay, five, uh, six, and seven, just like that. So there we've matched the thumbnails to the Lightbox gallery images. So I'll go ahead and preview in the browser. And if I click, we have the images there. Okay, so now I can add the icons. If you notice, they're just squares here. So to add the icons for the Lightbox gallery, you just go to File, add files for upload, and then go to the widgets folder. So here I have the widgets folder, and in the widgets folder, there's a folder called fonts. So you just wanna select these four font files and click open. And that will add the icons for the Lightbox gallery. So I'll go to file, preview page, and browser, and I'll click on the thumbnail. There I have the icons, I can go full screen and zoom in, just like that and I can go through the gallery one by one. Um, one thing, if I close the light box, I don't want all the thumbnails kind of stretching across so much, and I want more space here on the left and the right. So here I'll click on the widget, I'll open the widget options, I'll go to thumbnail images, or excuse me, thumbnail options, and for the thumbnails max width, I'll say 75%. So there's a little bit uh, more white space on the side of the thumbnails. Okay, so just like that, we have the thumbnails 75% within the browser, and there's a bit more white space on the left and the right of the thumbnails here. Um, so we've added the images, we've compressed them, uh, we've added the thumbnails, and we've added the icons. So the next part would be to create the PayPal buttons to add to the caption here, so that when the user is going through, they can click on the caption and uh, purchase the item they see here in the Lightbox gallery. So we need to do that in PayPal, so I'm going to sign into PayPal. So once you're signed into PayPal, you wanna click on Tools, and this will bring you to this page. And on here, you wanna click on PayPal buttons, because we're gonna create a few PayPal buttons. Um, so as you can see, I've already created a few uh, for this example, uh, painting one through five. Um, so here, I wanna mm -hmm. click on Create New Button. 
So I'll go ahead and click on there and it'll bring us to uh, a new button. So the button type, I want it to be a shopping cart so that when they click to purchase it, they can either go back and, and shop some more or they can check out. Uh, so for the item name, I'll say painting, um, we'll do painting 10 because I already have a few paintings there. And for the item ID, I'll say 20. Um, you can put any item ID in here. This is more for like tracking, you know, how many purchases have been made. You can track it by item ID. Um, and PayPal is really good with explaining everything on this page. Um, we don't need too many of the, of the options here, so I'll just go through and fill out a few. Uh, so for the price, I'll say 2,500, just like that. And then we don't need to create a button, so I'm gonna skip this part right here. Uh, for the shipping, I'm gonna say 45. And you can also change the currency here. You can choose from all of these uh, currencies. And then you can use your secure merchant account ID or your primary email address uh, for the merchant account ID here. Um, here you can track inventory, profit, and loss, and you can customize advanced features like you know what happens if the user uh, once the user finishes checkout or if they cancel the checkout and things like that. So you can go through the, through that and kind of set that up. Uh, but for now, I just want a simple button with the name, the item ID, the price. Um, the shipping and you can also enter in the tax rate if you if you want to add uh, a tax rate to the item um, So that's all I need for the button. So here I'll click on create button and Then here we have a uh, code um, if I were to paste this in as code into Adobe Muse It would create an add to cart button. Um, I just want to link the caption to this product or this item So I'm going to click on email. I'm going to select click on select code and then I'm gonna hit Command-C to copy, then go back into Adobe Muse, and in the Lightbox uh, gallery here, the, light, uh, the responsive Lightbox gallery, I'll click on image one, and then here for the cap caption link, I'll highlight this and hold down Command-V to paste, and then hit Enter. Then for the image title, I'll say click here to buy now, and then the price, I'll do the dollar sign, and then plus shipping. And then for the description, I'll say beautiful painting. And then for the alternative text, um, I'll do uh, image of uh, building and umbrellas. Okay, just to let the search engines know what that image is about. Okay, so that's all we need to do to, to link the caption to a PayPal product. Um, so now if I go to file, preview page and browser, and I'll click in the gallery, and then here it says click here to buy now. I'll click. And it takes us to the PayPal checkout. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these um, so we can have a clean uh, shopping cart here. So let me continue shopping. I'll go back in here, click here to buy now. And just like that, we've added painting 10, item number 20, uh, with the price, the quantity, the total, and the shipping as well. So let's create one more button. So let's go back into PayPal and I'll click on create a new button. And we'll just go through the steps again. So for the item name, I'll say painting 11, item ID 21, uh, price say 2000, currency USD, uh, shipping I'll say 45, and then tax rate, no tax rate. And that's all good there. So I'll click on create button. Then I'll go into email, I'll click on select code, hit command C to copy, go back into the widget, and on image two, I'll do select this and hit command V to paste. Image title, click here to buy now, uh, 2000 plus shipping. Okay, description, um, image of lady. Alternative text or image image text, yep, okay, image description, yeah, image of lady, and alternative text, image of lady, or we'll just call this beautiful painting, okay, we have image one, yep, there we go, so now I'll go back into the gallery, click on the gallery, go to the second painting here, click here to buy now, And there we go. So we have painting 10 and painting 11, and we can you know check out with PayPal, debit or credit card, or for a guest, we can just uh, check out as a guest or continue shopping. 
and go through the rest of the images just like that. So there it is, uh, creating a virtual art gallery in Adobe Muse. And I can go ahead, um, just for fun, kind of just copy and paste these into the other ones. I'll just do it for two more. And just like that. And for four, we'll do two. So I'm just copying and pasting. Uh, yeah, image. I'll say image here and image. Okay, because it's a different alternative. These images are different. So for the third one, I say the image of a vase. Uh, the fourth one, I would say landscape image. Okay, looks good. Yeah, I didn't get too descriptive with those names there. Um, and one other thing I'm going to do for the light box is I'm going to set the opacity to one. Um, so that that text is very visible when the user is uh, looking through the images. So I'll click. So now we can see it's very clear. Click here to buy now, 2,500 plus shipping. Um, the user can go full screen, just go through, see the price. And then when they want to purchase, they'll just click there and it'll take them to PayPal. All right, looks good. Uh, there's the item total, the shipping cost, and they can check out there yeah, with PayPal. And just to make sure that it works well on mobile, I'm gonna check it with the Xcode developer tools. So I'm gonna open up Xcode right down here. And I do have a quick tip on this on using Xcode. So here it is, and then I'll just go to Xcode, open developer tool, and I'll click on simulator. Okay, and I'm gonna be using the iPhone 5S simulator. So we'll just let it open here. So here I'll open up Safari. So I'll click on the app here, the Safari app. And then I want to uh, copy the URL from this site. So I'll select it here, the URL. I'll hold down Command-C to copy, go back into the simulator, and then I'll hit Command-V, then click once, and then paste, and enter. So here I have the virtual art gallery, and I do have to reposition it on the lowest breakpoint. So let me just go to this breakpoint here, and I'll reposition all of the elements here. I'll do it for all the breakpoints, just like that and looks good okay so i'll go to file preview page in browser and then i'll go back to the simulator hold down refresh or click refresh and there we have it changed here for the simulator so here i'll click on the thumbnails and there i can see how it will look on an iphone 5s and i can just go through and look through the gallery so let's say i want to purchase this image here i'll click on the caption click here to buy now and it'll take me to PayPal. So it looks good. I can check out with PayPal or as check out as a guest, and I can look at the items here as well. So it looks good. I can see that it works well on mobile devices and on iPhone devices as well. Um, so that's basically it. I'll close these windows here. That's it for creating a virtual art gallery in Adobe Muse with the responsive lightbox gallery. Um, you can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be a painting. Um, you can have products in the lightbox gallery and just say, hey, um, you know, you can click here to purchase this product and it'll take him to PayPal. Um, so to get access to the responsive lightbox gallery widget, you simply go to musefreeshop.com and here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. The responsive lightbox gallery is right here. And here you can click add to cart to purchase individually or again you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets i come out with for 39 a year here are a few of the widget options description um, and a preview page um, that you can check out the responsive lightbox gallery looks good all right so i'll go back to the page here um, so that's it for this video tutorial again i do this to help you build awesome websites without code if you like this video tutorial you can subscribe below also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.